Hello, I am Grace Nugent. I am the General Manager at DeLacy Executive. Today I'm going to be talking about culture architects and culture assassins. So culture architects are going to be someone in your business who are going to be those who are liked who they might not even have the status of a manager. They might be leaders who are leading behind the scenes. Really those individuals in your business that other people take advice from, they respect. They really are talented group of individuals who are admired by the rest of the team. That is what we mean by a culture architect in a business. Um, so I can definitely say hand on heart, here at everyone at DeLacy Executive is currently a culture architect. So now what we mean by culture architect is people who are here to build, who are have the same beliefs and values in a business, who really are here to control, you know, the things that we can all contribute into the business. A lot of the time, there's so many ways we can contribute to the business that really they require zero talent but have a hundred percent effect for example you know the worth ethic that you show in a business actually your attitude the effort you put in being on work on time being on work you know professionally presentable having that, that passion for what you do those are all the attributes and so many more that you should be looking for within your team you know even having leaders who might not even be in a management position but are still leading and they're influencing your team it really doesn't matter what status they are within your business as long as you are having a business that is built upon culture architects i suppose in, in direct correlation to that you are also likely to get culture assassins in a business now a lot of people may refer to these as bad apples but um, in the professional world, we often call these culture assassins. And what we mean by a culture assassin is exactly the po polar opposite, really, is you'd be looking at somebody who um, is negative, who really does not, is not on board and does not believe in the, the values and the, the direction the business is going into. They might not agree or like management and their way of dealing with this unhappiness is to um, project their negativity and thoughts on others within the team. There's a lot of um, leaders who um, will be aware of people being culture assassins in the business, but A, they might not realise there's a label that goes with it, or B, be, have the confidence to do something about it. That That's really where a lot of the problems can lie. And I suppose part of the aim of this advice we're giving here is to give you the confidence. If you're a leader, if you're a manager within a business and you feel someone is not on board and is really um, taking your business not to where it should be, if they're a bad apple, that's okay. You know, a lot of people can feel that because as I say somebody is performing and they're bringing in the figures then you know that means they almost can have a bad attitude they can be a bad apple and that allows that but really our aim is to to kind of really I suppose educate that that isn't okay um, and to show the detrimental effects that can have so um, typically you can see uh, assassins will build up a subgroup of three to four others um, and the aim of the group will be to sort of actively disengage um, from the business um, and we can see the damages that this has when I referred to earlier on the bottom line uh, we'll see anything from £50,000 of lost productivity to anything up to half a million depending on how many people they uh, leave to sort of uh, indoctrinate really into the process and the longer the um, somebody of this nature is left the worst and the increased damages you'll see from it all. So um, five um, main costs from having a culture assassin in your business. Number one would be productivity. Productivity 
could be down by as much as 20% by having these people in your business. Number two would be marketing costs. And that's the cost to really repair the damage that they've done to your culture and your brand within your business. Number three would be management time, uh, which would be a significant con contributor to this and HR time on top of that as well. Um, number four would be replacing people who've been driven out as a result of having these people in your business. And linked to that um, definitely would be, um, again, with management being consumed by focusing on these negative people and actually as a result subconsciously neglecting the good people in your business and not giving them the chance to be promoted and shine. And number five would be um, the cost of actually replacing the people um, who have left as a result of it. So it's really that, that turnover percentage of your business that will ultimately affect your bottom line. So really with this, what we're saying is, is if you look at a business that has four million pounds turnover, then the cost of this could be easily a hundred thousand pounds. When looking at what to do, so you've identified, you've got a culture assassin in your business, what to do now, you know, and, and I'm not going to lie, particularly if they're a high a productive culture assassin, you have to be ballsy here and you do have to make a call and really believe in um, where you can go beyond without having them in the business. And top tip that I definitely give in this regard is isolation. If if you cut them off, if you cut a bad apple off from being able to infect other apples, let's say, then that is going to be the thing that really steers them out of a business. Because with uh, somebody who is an assassin, the power, the feeding comes off others. So really, I would say rather than concentrating and wasting va you know, valuable time by trying to steer someone who is potentially very negative and trying to almost beat those thoughts out of them, that is unproductive. You need to focus on the rest of the team and actually really make sure you know, where you want to take the business, where you're going, how you're going to get there, transparency, communication, bringing everyone along with you is fundamental because then when you get the rest of the team on that journey with you, the, the culture assassin will be left vulnerable because they will have nobody they can go to with their negativity. And from the uh, experience and research that I've looked into this area, more often than not, they will actually voluntarily hand in their notice because that culture is no longer their environment where they're flourishing in their opinion anymore. And that, more than anything, is where you need to steer them to. It's very unwise um uh for a business particularly as i say if they are doing well um to directly fire a culture assassin uh you have to be very wary and make sure you're going into it with your eyes open and and really have a plan with how you're going to do this so in conclusion um i know myself as a manager as easy as it is to put your head in the sand you really need to be able to be doing something about this moving forward and you have to be proactive. And when you are taking on new members of staff, if you are using a recruitment company, you've got to ensure you're using a recruitment company that identifies the difference between these two types of individuals because the last thing you want to do is actively employ an assassin into your business.